it's kind of crazy that we're we're having this conversation because when we're recording this there are 300 over 300,000 cps students that mm. are not in school at the moment because of the teacher strike and that's all you do is you you try to one keep the kids in school but then also keep them continuing going to school and going to higher education so is, this has got to be a weird time for you right yeah, it's definitely an interesting time. Um, you know, we obviously want to support the students and we obviously want to support the teachers who are fighting to make the student experience as supportive and impactful as possible. So, yeah. you know, it's definitely something that we we support, but also something that we, we want to support the students and their families on during this time as well. Yeah, what so. a weird place to be. So um, I'm here with Samantha, uh, Samantha Rudnicki, Program Director for Pass with Flying Colors. Pass College, with right? Flying Colors. And so give us a little... Little, uh, a little sum up of exactly what Pass with Flying Colors is and what they do, what you do. Yeah. Uh, so Pass with Flying Colors is a college access and college success program. Um, so we're one of the few actual eight-year programs that support students. So students actually get into our program halfway through their freshman year of high school, and they stay in our program all the way through college graduation. That's fantastic. So we'll, let's walk through some of those, um, I guess, the process. So we're from where do they enter and what is the goal, I guess, to where they leave? Because and, and do all students make it through the whole program? Yeah, that's a really great question. So um, we try to retain as many students as we can. So students come into our program in cohorts of 25 students. So students actually apply to our program when they're freshmen in high school. Okay. They go through an application process. Really, the only true requirement we have to make it into one of our cohorts is to be a first generation college student. So that means the first in their family to go to and through um, either a two or four year college or university. Um, and then really, we just try to have students stay within our program um, all the way through graduation. Um, and so currently, we definitely have 100% of our students um, that graduate high school begin college. And from that 100%, 90% are on track to graduate. That's that's inc- Those are incredible stats. Yeah. So what when the students are presented, because this is probably a hard thing to, for them to understand. So break it down when they're presented with this as an option, like, you uh, your goal is ultimately to get them to go into college and go through through college mm-hmm. for, and, and give the opportunity to kids that wouldn't otherwise have it is it mostly because of low income is are there other circumstances like what are those circumstances that um that kids might need your help? Yeah, so I think college persistence rate, especially for students that are first in their family to go to college, there's a lot of factors. One is definitely um, just understanding and knowledge of the college process, especially Mm -hmm. within America. So we definitely have some families that are immigrants or coming from different countries that um, our American school system is definitely set up a lot differently. I didn't even think of that. It's just just a whole new world. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and when you grow up in America, you have this idea, you go to school and then you go to college Mm -hmm. and and this is the process. This is how things work. Mm-hmm. And then some people do and some people don't. But that's mm-hmm. not even an option for a lot of people growing up until yeah. they come here. Yeah. So one piece of our process is just that college access, understanding what it means to go to college, how to apply to college, how to do college visits, how to complete a college application. Um, just this past Saturday, we had our FAFSA workshop where we brought in our parents and our students and they sat down together and completed the FAFSA in terms of what that means, um, how to complete this form, what to expect moving forward. Mm. Um, but the other side of that puzzle is is that um, you know uh, of the students that graduate from CPS, um, only about fifteen percent are actually earning a college degree right now. And through mm-hmm. my time in education, um, through my research, a lot of that has to do with um, those non cognitive so- soft skills that a lot of students don't have fully developed. So a bigger part of our curriculum is also really developing those soft skills. Um, so that can go anywhere from like realistic self appraisal, from like you know leadership to community service. Um, really helping to develop these skills in students so that way when they do go to college, they feel successful not only academically but also on that social emotional level. So you get to do also uh, academic academic tutoring, right? Correct. And then, so, but then you also take it a step further and you focus on those things that they don't teach you in school, which is a huge conversation now of what they should and shouldn't be teaching in school because a lot of people get out of school and they're like, wow, I don't have these life skills. Cool. I know what mm-hmm. geometry is, but I don't have life skills. Yeah. So you guys do focus on that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So a lot of our curriculum, especially within our high school program is a balance between that college knowledge piece, but also really honing in on what are these skills that we're seeing students 
really lacking in that we want to help develop and have the time to. So one thing that really draws me to Pass with Flying Colors is that we're really individualized. So for our high school program, we meet with every single high school student on a one-on-one basis on a weekly wow. weekly basis. Um, and then we also run one, uh, once a week uh, weekly sessions for the full cohort. So. It- and how does it work? Do you go to them? Do they come to your facility? Do you work within the schools and work with the teachers and the ad- administration? Too? Yeah, great question. So we actually push into the schools. So the school mm. is actually giving us a space. So you're visible student- too. We're visible yeah, too. Great. Yeah. Um, we also provide supports to the schools. So we're able to, we just recently went and helped um, the college counselor invited us to come help other seniors who they were just hosting wow. a workshop. So we were able to rotate around and just kind of provide our assistant. On top of that, our students actually were student leaders during that workshop so our seniors who've been through our program then in turn oh, taught cool. other other seniors who were just starting their college application process that has to be like the ultimate reward when it comes down to it. you you now mm-hmm. have these kids that came into your program yeah. with not really knowing what the d- direction that they were going to end up in and now they're helping that's cra- that's so cool that's got to yeah. give you chills i don't yeah give me chills yeah it's just really cool to see them kind of take that ownership ownership process because yeah. ultimately that's the goal right for them not only to find that pathway and success for themselves but also to bring that pathway and knowledge to not only their family but their communities we're really looking to make like a community impact yeah. um in terms of the work that we do and so you say it's a total of what uh, right now it's 25 students did you say yeah per cohort so okay. overall we're at about 135 scholars okay. total um and we are rapidly growing so we are expanding within our summer programming as well as within possibly going into other school partnerships moving into next year how do you grow how is it funded Yeah, absolutely. So we do a lot of just fundraising efforts around the community. Um, And it's a 5013C? Is that? It is. Okay. Yes. Um, So we actually do have an upcoming um, fundraiser on November 8th. Um, We're going to be at Royal Palms. Yep. So they're going to do an event. Our junior board is actually hosting an event called Shuffle for the Students. Um, Cool. So they do do shuffle boards, so shuffle for the students. Yeah. Yeah. And we do a bunch of other fundraisers. Fundraisers as well. Um, our um, founder, Kenny Goldman, helps us as well in terms of helping to provide that developmental piece. We just did a wonderful fundraiser with Discovery Clothing where they helped um, ask for donations and things yeah. like that um, at the start of the school year. So, so really, the the growth depends on you know people's generosity and yeah. people's willing to want to see the youth go for higher education and have opportunities for kids that generally wouldn't have the opportunities other otherwise. Is there just a straight donation page too as well? I would yep. hope. Yeah, I would yeah assume. there is. And so to kind of learn more about the opportunities, everything is through our website, um, which is passwithflyingcolors.org. Um, and you can really learn about all the different volunteer opportunities. So it goes from volunteering or, you know, submitting a donation for all of our fundraisers. Um, we also look for volunteers to be mentors to our students. So yeah. all of our scholars cool. are assigned to individual mentor um and what do the qualifications of a mentor have to be like do i have to be a teacher do i have to you know have what certain skills should i have yeah absolutely honestly the skills is just being a professional in the workplace that's interested in providing guidance to our youth um so we really try to pair our scholars with a mentor who's within a similar industry or with some similar career interest as our scholar um, to help them kind of navigate that world and really understand like what are the options right and so for example if we have a student who's interested in nursing we try really hard to pair them with a mentor who is within the medical field in some capacity Um, to help them kind of navigate those pathways, help gain different partnerships, internships, things like that, and also just provide that support um, to the student as they navigate through college. Have you seen, uh, or what? I guess, what resources as far as the mentorship or um, what other resources have you seen that have been most successful? Like if you could have an abundance of something for Pass with Flying Colors, is it mentors? Is it money? Is it books? Is it technology? You know, what What do you think is the maybe, and I know it's probably hard to rank them, but you've seen a lot of success within. Yeah, I think for us, like at the core of everything we do is individualized and experiential. So the experiences mm-hmm. and partnerships in our community is what we value the absolute most. Would that most. be like the mentorship? For so that mostly, could be or? the mentors. Yeah, that could be the mentors. That could be we partner with um, BOMA in Chicago. They provide a job shadow opportunity for our students every spring. Yeah. They also come and bring like their students volunteers that are coming on Monday to help our students prepare for college interviews. Cool. Um, so we just really value those community partners that provide additional opportunities.
opportunities and experiences for our scholars. Um, we strive really hard to get them not only within the school building, but we right. really take them outside. You know, just this past Monday, we partnered with Dominican University and they hosted us for a college visit for our students, which was awesome. Right. Um, they were able to talk to current college students. They were able to hear about different majors, financial it's a whole aid. Different perspective. Yeah. And it's just really impactful for them to get out of even the city, even though it's just in River Forest, just to get out of the city and really yeah. think about, okay, like I'm on a college campus. Um, and Dominican did a phenomenal job of partnering with us to put together a really impactful visit for our students. Yeah. Because somebody can tell you what something's supposed to be like or how you're supposed to act or what situations mm-hmm. are going to come up all you want. Mm-hmm. But until you're in those situations... The kids will mm-hmm. never really have that perspective. Yeah. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And they probably have a whole different um, excitement being in there and saying, okay, this mm-hmm. is where I want to be. And now they have a tangible mm-hmm. goal as opposed to something that might just be an, an, an imaginary thing to them until yeah. it's right in front. That's that's so amazing. That's yeah. special. Yeah. Um, so how, how can people sign up for those things or get organizations involved yeah. uh, in any aspect, I guess? Absolutely. So again, through our website, um, everything is kind of through there. We actually have a volunteer tab that you can click down um, and that would connect you directly with our executive director, Jessica Paulson, um, and she would help kind of navigate the pathways between different ways to really get involved with our students. Um, so again, engagement can go anywhere from just donations to participating in an upcoming fundraiser to volunteering to mentor. We look for volunteer tutors. Um, and so just a bunch of different yeah. ways to really interact with our students. We'll get the website one more time. Sure. It's www.passwithflyingcolors.org. I love that. Samantha Rudnicki, the program director for Pass With Flying Colors. We're going to get all these kids into college and we're going to get them and make sure their futures are as bright as they can possibly be. 